This week, episode 323 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I have some stuff that we need to discuss. Uh, we're going to talk cigars and spirits for sure. We're going to try to not talk about this uh, funky thing that's going on across the nation that's shutting places down. We're going to try our very hardest for that. Uh, it's been a long week. Anything can happen Friday, and we have a bunch of topics and emails that I want to review, and I want to uh, talk to Drew and bring him up to speed as to some of the things that have been on my mind in the industry as it's rapidly changing minute by minute or email by email blitz. Stogie Geeks episode 323 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 323. I am your host, Joe Hosemper. It's a privilege and an honor to be here on Stogie Geeks. It has been one hell of a long week, but before we talk about that, today is anything that happened Friday. I am laughing inside because before I start the show and right after I introduced Drew, I just got an email update about what's going on in Congress from legitimate people, so you want to stay tuned. Uh, as we walk that episode. Anyway, I welcome the little dark haired boy from Texas. Ah. Drew, how's it going? Good, brother. Good to be back. I know last week I missed a very good interview with uh, Dr. Uh, Gabby. And, uh, you know, I had some uh, work uh, engagements to, uh, to, uh, to really attend to last week. Uh, it is Friday the 13th, so definitely anything can happen. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, here we are uh, amid, amid a uh, pandemic throughout the you know country, as you st- touched about earlier. Uh, other than that, man, uh, I'm alive and kicking, brother. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, it has been one heck of a week. It's been a long week uh, for sure. And news cycles are uh, switching uh, a little bit uh, there. Uh, if I can yeah. just get a little bit of audio on my headphones, that'd be great. Okay, so, um, Drew, just got yeah. I just got an email, okay? I'll divulge uh, where I got it from and all of that stuff here on the show. Um, it's titled, Where Premium Cigars Stand in Congress, and then in mm. brackets after that, update, okay? Uh, so, if you're a, a cigar smoker, you probably heard... Um, about some of the regulation by the uh, potential FDA and how they might move it out of the FDA. Uh, Here's a couple things that you need to know about what's going on, okay? What's going on? I'm going to give you a synopsis for this. If anybody needs a link, joeh at uh, stoygeeks.com. I'll CC Drew and away we go. Um, So anyway, so so what's going on? Congress is finishing up uh, a bill that 
will uh, attach potential funding for um, to do test plans that don't exceed a specific uh, predicate date. Uh, and it's uh, in the process of constructing uh, language that uh, that language that and then big red. Here's the point, right? Language, and I quote: language that would exempt premium cigars from FDA control. Right? Wow. Pretty cool, right? Go. So we yeah. have we have language that. Um, says, and I quote, language that would exempt cigars from FDA control. However, negotiations are done uh, in private and they are ongoing, such as there is no guarantee that the language uh, would be available within the final bill. Okay? Uh, the cigar industry has asked consumers uh, to call congressional leaders uh, and to make sure that the, the language obviously stays in the bill. Okay, so it's in the bill uh, to separate uh, premium cigars from uh, the uh, pro proposed bill under FDA regulations amid the potential uh, potent potentially ca catastrophic things that could happen to a massive slowdown, slowdown, right? Not shutdown, mm -hmm. slowdown uh, in new products, uh, the end of limited production and removal of half the cigars currently being sold uh, on shelves here in the u.s all stuff that we've said um th this isn't breaking news okay uh two it's a four-part process two what would be exempted great question right great question right. so here we go uh it is believed that the definition of premium cigars included in the bill would be much more appropriate if the proposed definition was set as to what a premium cigar is Logical. Yes. There we go. Very We're getting much. somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Hold on. Language is likely to exempt premium cigars. Uh, I'm sorry. Language is likely to exempt premium cigars similar to how they are taxed um, under the uh, SHIP. That's national taxation from uh, a America standpoint, not state legislature and all of that stuff right. there too. Okay, great. Section three. Uh, when will we find out? All right, we get we get we get some traction, Drew. All right? Yes, sir. Um, Tuesday doesn't give a date though. It just says Tuesday. While most of Congress left Friday afternoon, the leadership uh, and those appropriations committees are working through the weekend to continue the to have the negotiations con continue. So most of them left, mm -hmm. but they but they're continuing. Totally can happen. The whole remote thing is becoming like norm. The norm. The, the norm, right? So, okay. All right. Correct. I can believe that. The delay means, oh, I'm sorry, the potential delay means that Congress will have to pass another short term uh, through the, the uh, House uh, f with, vari with, vari gov with various government agencies um, that are funded in the meantime. Okay. All right. Sure. Other tobacco products, I can buy that. Oh, I don't, I don't, well, cool. I don't have an ashtray. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's, uh, all right. So, right. So, what should I do as a cigar consumer? This is it. It's the final spot. And uh, there's a purpose for me reading to you this because this is updated from Congress, right? Um, right. what should I do? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know when you read something before and you're like, freaking, the, the views reflect that I'm about to read are not Joe Zempa, right? Uh, keep right. calling in writing. Below are three numbers that you can call for your representatives uh, f that need to be know about the to have premium cigars be exempted from FDA regula from FDA regulation. Thank you, sir. And it gives the numbers, and I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna bother you with that. So. Mm. That's an update from Congress. Bullet point, because I'm really not good at reading on the fly, especially visually. So if you're watching this, I apologize. But it does have a point. That's why I'm trying to move fast. All right. So it does have a point. What's going on? We all know it's being regulated, trying to get it out of the, trying to get it out of the FDA's hands. Easy enough. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. Two. Definitely. Two. What are we asking to be exempted? Premium cigars. What are we gonna do? Find a definition of premium cigars. That's cool. 
I'm fair. I'm, I'm like, yeah, okay? I've yeah. only been saying that for a while. All right. When will we find out? Tuesday. They're working on it, but it overhaul. Well, okay, cool. Yep. That might be a wimpy Tuesday, right? Uh, well, Tuesday. You know, wimp, remember wimp, Remember wimpy? What, when he used to pay, he, what, he used to tell somebody that he was gonna pay for a hamburger. You know, right, give him a hamburger today, uh, uh, he'll pay for it on Tuesday. Yep. But he just never said what Tuesday he was gonna he pay. Never it, said, yes. I, okay. I got it, true. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm a little slow on this. <laughs> I'm a little slow on this. Okay. And what should uh, you do? Keep calling and writing your congressman. Flash him an email. There you go. Okay. Correct. Cool. All right. Yes. You ready for this? You know the timestamp on that email? Hmm. I said I just got an email, right? Yeah, you just got it, so yeah. what is the timestamp on it? Okay, that's the only thing I kind of did that. I'm going through some archive notes. Yeah. Ready? November 3rd, 2015. Mm. Okay. So, and it's Interesting. I just pulled up an yeah. archived email from my work, FDA regular day, and I read you verbatimly right. an email. Well, not verbatimly. I'm sorry. I read you, synopsis-wise, breaking news update from Congress, Congress on November of 2015. Mm. But it's happening today. There you go. Or this coming... <laughs> there's your, there's your, there's your, so all, all the other cigar podcasts out there that talk about this, that, and the other thing, and all that stuff there too, blah, blah, blah. Go back and check your show notes. We're talking about the same thing over and over with this FDA. It's crazy. Because other than me saying I just got it in, you would legitimately think that that has particular traction. Right. And that's my point. Hmm. Only thing to add on to that, if you want to fast forward it up to this, is uh, you know about the possible legislation of having the cigars go to twelve dollars and all of that stuff, right? To be a minimum to go online and all of that stuff. What do you what do you think about what do you what do you think about all of that and in that intro there? What do you what, what's uh, what's go? There has to be a million and one things going on through your head. I was trying to be serious, but I couldn't be serious yeah. because I knew like of, of the date. Like think about that. Just. Like yeah. that that was one of my things that I just read when I was doing the intro and I'm like, huh, that's weird. Oh, 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 I'm starting the show with this because I'm, I, I, I go show by show with yeah. or without you doing that there. And we're trying to, you know, talk legitimately about traction. If there's traction, there you go. Uh, there's even shows about traction. Uh, there's shows about where they p- uh, potential, and it's like I sometimes feel that I could probably you hook up. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Jingle Palette, right? It's a, uh-huh. it's a, it's a, it's a audio video thing that we use for production, right? We've used it sure. in TV and radio, and, and we use it here as well. And I could probably do sound bites of myself, and probably do a whole episode with a congressman or woman about that and just hit jingle palette and not if i ever had laryngitis which they would probably yeah. hope that i have or probably would come on the show if i did uh i could literally press the buttons and, and do that there yeah so as of late i mean what you once you just touched on that email as of late i mean that's just what's now you know in the fruition world and congress about separating you know premium cigars from the otbs yep and and that being that, it's it's the same soundbite from 2015 and beyond. Yep. And, and so, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's like it's like who are they trying to appease at this point? I mean, I mean, what do we? What do we I mean, we're in an election year coming up, and I, I I don't you know we I can get into all that rhetoric, but it's just it gets lost in translation. But uh, but here we are. So. Uh, I mean, everybody feels like it's it's gaining traction. It's going to go fast. Uh, it's not. I mean, I think you have always said, and I am very. I'll put my bets up, bets on what you have said. It'll be 2023, 2025, by the time all this comes to full on fruition, and then everybody can go about their cigar business in the industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might not. 
Yeah, and, is that and, is, is, is not what is not what you said before? Well, no. Originally, originally when this dialogue began, and I was on uh, Cigar Club Radio, uh, uh-huh. the it, we were we were talking. I was talking, and I says it's gonna, and, and I've said it multiple times. I was like, it's gonna be twenty twenty by the time this we even even have any type of traction. And and I kind of said it like just I don't know. Some some of my close friends say, well, you know, that's just Joe being Joe, because you know, I, yeah. I I I like to give a visual anyway, both in and out of Stokey Geeks. I don't have word economy. It's just the way. So sure. like, and I'm like, it's gonna be 2020, and I and I and, I, and, and now here we are, and yeah. even all of last year, I'm like, here we are in 2019, and I just see zero traction, and all the panic, and I, you know, I, and then. We finally got a little bit of traction. Okay, a bill passed to have it not go through the uh, FDA. Have there be a separate committee? Okay, sure. Um, does that involve a predicate day and or testing? Answers unknown. Uh, and, right. and then also uh, tagging in stipends online. Because how bills work is they put riders on them, right? So if you vote for this bill, um, HR, which stands for House of Representatives, for those of you who might not know, HR one two three, the same bill can be an S four five six, right? I'm just making numbers sure. up, so please don't look them up, right? Uh, amendments uh, to the bills, and then and then they throw riders on them, and then and then they do that, and and, and that happens a lot at the town level there, mm-hmm. because uh, especially uh, I know that from a Rhode Island perspective, because as you know, we're very geographically small, but we have 39 states and municipalities, so we have 39 decision entities. I don't even think Texas does. How many mm-hmm. do you know? How many Texas does have? I, I don't mm-hmm. know off the top of my head. And not to put you on the spot, but my point is, you could drive through Rhode Island <laughs> in thirty-five minutes, right? And so, you know, it, it's one of those things where it takes a while. Also, having that be my first professional job, it takes a while to for that legislative process to go through. And then you also got to remember, okay, so something passed in the House. That's been the big hype. A lot of uh, cigar influencers, either be they or the podcast or. Uh, Cigar, um, you know, I'm I'm not picking on any names, but any type sure. of cigar owner who has a, a social media account is excited about this. This is great for our industry. All oh, this is bad, whatever their opinion is, and then there. And sure. I'm saying it only passed the House. It's not going to get through the Senate. It's it's right. uh, it's not going to get because historically speaking, from any type of vote. House seems to be a little bit more flexible. I'm not going to use the word liberal or anything like that. It used to be, be a little bit more flexible with some with some of their committees in there. And then uh, even if it passes through Senate, we still have three branches of government. We should have learned this in the sixth or seventh grade, depending on your curriculum, right? And, sure. and, and then from there, and, and then like <laughs> I really don't think that our current president um, will do anything to hurt or 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 hinder small business. In in or out of the the industry, and now with everything right. that's been happening this week, with with some of the shutdowns and some of the postponements, it's 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 again. I always said this since 2015: the government has bigger fish to fry or bigger things to worry about than the premium cigar industry. We should just move sure. forward. We should just move forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, and, and yeah. I- yeah, go ahead. Go, no, you go. I was you just going to say, I was just going to say, you know, having these uh, uh, bill uh, updates, you know, through like as you were saying, through other social media platforms, um, and 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 I, and I implore the cigar uh, uh, consumer, you got to keep writing. Just keep every time that happens, we get a we get past a certain hurdle. Uh, keep writing. You're a congressman. You know, mm-hmm. just talk about the hurdle that they just passed and how great it is to, you know. Uh, Give them an attaboy, you know, an attaboy email and just keep them going uh, on the momentum until we get to that point. So and I do. I, I know I write about six emails a week mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to, to to give them attaboys and, 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 and give them some points that I'm thinking and deep thought and just kind of help that further the argument or the discussion of, of separating the premium cigar industry from OTB. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it, today's anything can happen Friday, so you can feel free to fire back with me with any out out of their questions you have. How do you feel about organizations um, that send out in the newsletter what to say? 
Like, I, I, yeah, that, like, like what, or, or, or now because of technology, what to tweet and who to tweet. Like, like there's now been like, if you copy and paste here on Twitter, mm-hmm. if that's your platform or Facebook or whatever, it'll go to the appropriate sure. person. So they, how, how do you, how do you think about that? Like, well, what, what's your, what's your personal take on that? Uh, I don't, I don't have one on that because I'm going to tell you what, it's like this. I mean, if you need help, uh, basically uh, coming up with a an email. I mean, yeah, you can go ahead and read through it and then just kind of pick bits out of it and then put your email in your own words. I, I don't I don't like to, you know, plagiarize somebody else's work. I just try to, you know, take a little bit from their thoughts and then bring it in together with my thoughts. And if it works, great. And then I translate it into my own and then throw it out there. Um, but yeah, I just, I prefer if you try to be as genuine as you can not try do be as genuine as you can uh, in your communication and and also to you know anyone that's in the industry regarding these matters. Yep, you you bring up a valid point because having worked for a House of Representatives, um, the uh, the methodology then. Now keep in mind, I'm not here to tell you I know the latest and greatest, but the methodology mm-hmm. then, if templated emails came in. Um, they got printed and put into a pile and they weren't read, but they were counted mm-hmm. right now. Obviously, uh, every congressman or woman at the federal level has a uh, staff and has a chief of staff yep. and they keep track of those st- statistics and those mm-hmm. st- statistics actually, when they have a briefing with, with, with a- ex congressman or woman, Depending on how many templated emails that go in, it's up for the chief of staff to say, hey, we've gotten these emails, although they're templated, it's from, and it could be out of the industry, right? Could be from the Teamsters Union, could be from these people who are upset because you're taking a bridge down, or you're going to put a windmill in their section, or whatever, whatever. It raises a flag so that the chief of staff's job is to inform that person, like, should we show up to the next event? Uh, I know in our case, it was always, uh, does it fit in my schedule? Uh, A congressperson's schedule is usually six to eight months out. In an election year, it's even further. So, you know, uh, they get counted, but Uh I'm not 100% sure that that they all get read, especially if they're templated. Now, the ones that are not templated have to be read by a staff member so they can put them in the appropriate bucket as to whatever <laughs> the person is emailing or contacting the the uh con- the, the congress office about whatever issue yeah. it would be about cuz the cuz them just like the government are working on a ton of issues both on a federal level and on within their district as the as, state to level, where, yeah. as to where mm-hmm. they're voting so just like a little inside baseball there, because you know we're all on newsletters and forums. And again, I'm not picking on any. I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to well, with this show. I want to raise content and 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 have discussion um, that uh, can give people some information so that they can go on and make a decision for themselves. Like you know something, I, I should go contact my 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 congressman or the retailers that watch the show should turn around and yeah. say, yeah, you know, I should, or, you know, I probably shouldn't have done a template. I should probably just tell my story and stuff like that. And, 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 yeah. and, uh, but, but they do get counted and they do warrant there. But again, there are so many other issues that are pressing. I just think it, it now defaulting back to your original comment could be 2023 or 24, right. you know? Right. I mean, if we have a second, uh, cycle of current president, um, Yo, where are we? Uh, Twenty. It's twenty twenty six. Right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You know. I wonder. I, I wonder. You know, on this topic we're talking about right now, I wonder how the brick and mortar shops are also giving out this information and sharing it with their uh, club members or their, you know, their patrons, because that also as i talked to my my uh lounge you know uh know me over at prestige uh tobacco uh and cigar lounge over there in bedford you know we talk extensively about sharing this information and and giving this to our our patrons and having them understand why it's important for them to get involved uh, on that level because 
you know, again, uh, you know, we talk to a lot of cigar uh, reps that come through the shop and, you know, whether they're coming there to do a cut and light. And I, you know, for one, am always asking our our patrons or our lounge members to to bring up this matter and, and talk to them and see where they're at. Take some notes and then just kind of, you know, put them all together and fire off a uh, an email so mm -hmm. that's important i yep. think on that level because then you get really a real genuine sense of how strong um you know the patrons uh consumers are about this mm -hmm. about this uh happening i get mixed reviews Congress. i get mixed reviews from from the retailers i get uh -huh. some i get some that i ultra respect their position uh in their mm -hmm. stance like, yeah, I'm going to continue operating until something changes and then I'll pivot, but I'll be fine. Mm. Which not for nothing. If, if <laughs> I, 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 it's like, you know, I know we can't hug this week. We need our personal space. However, like, can I like, bro, like got it. Perfect. Yeah. Genius. Like you continue to operate. Because at that time right. you're gonna get the money, right? You, you, oh, and it's not all about money, but you know you, you have a business, right? You go, you continue yeah. to operate, and then when something tells you that you can't go, you know, and, and then and then I get others that are like, oh my god, you know, twelve dollars a stick, this brand, that brand, that brand. That's a five dollar stick I'm selling it for. It's a great five dollar stick, stick, right? Yeah. It's a great eight dollar stick. I sell a lot of them now. If I want to sell them online, it's going to be twelve. I was like, dude, whoa, relax. It's like, <laughs> it's like, I, I and, and then I tell them, and they're like, you know, what do you think? And I says, well, uh, um, have you ever driven down a street? And uh, how do you go to work, right? I would say, right, how do you go to work? Oh, I go. Yeah. Okay, is there a bridge? Yeah. Okay, you go to bridge. Okay. All of a sudden, there's a cop car and a couple of Jersey barriers across the bridge. The bridge right. is closed. What do you do? You don't go, officer, I got to get over that bridge. That's how I got to get to work. Or you don't get in your car and turn around and say, I can't get to work today. There's no bridge, right? You find a way. I, so if we do that in our daily lives, why can't an industry do that in their lives? I mean, there are now uh, outside of the, the – or even inside the, the – with this whole the situation that's going on with shutdowns and whatnot – Business is going to yeah. find another way to survive somehow, some way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we all subscribe to newsletters of business, and they're all telling us what they're doing for this pandemic and about and where they're going and, and guiding us through. Yeah. And they're, they're, you know, and it's like you, you're going to find a way. So just just find your way, and yeah. and, and 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 let it, it, it go because you know it's like relax. We're all not in control of anything, man. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know, but but again, I I I I think that most business owners do take the I'm gonna from my feedback I'm gonna take it and then go and then and and whatever happens is is what happens. Also, a lot of brick and mortars like I'm not even on online. You know what right. I mean? I'm like, well, that's strike one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, I mean, you know, hats off has nothing to do because he's from Texas. I've admired. Yeah. Don from underground. I mean, he's got. Yeah. A, he's not only got a following locally. He's got an under, oh. uh, underground. He's got an online presence as well. And it's like yeah. you know something. He built a destination. And he built a business. That's it. Simple. 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 And it's like Simplicity. just do it. Just do it. So anyway, yeah. I just thought that that was uh, a pretty good way, uh, uh, way to to, to uh, lead into anything can happen Friday or. Um, the Friday the Thirteenth episode of Stogie Geeks, but you yeah. really wanted to talk about pairings today. I love talking about pairings because every oh, time, yeah. every time we talk about pairings, I get a barrage of emails of of, <laughs> of this is what I like. Do you like what I like? Do you think that this is worth it? I've I got a couple about Pappy when when we did a uh, I we did a Drew promotion last year, early yeah. last year with the Pappy uh, cigars, and people were asking me like my opinion on on that on like the the the, the pappy, not not the cigar, the the drink, the pappy Van Winkle, and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's it's it, 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 again, uh, my answer is going to be the same. It's what you're comfortable with. Go out and experiment and explore right. for yourself. It's the same. It's the, it's the same. 
it's the same argument I would make in regards to to any of this pen, this pending regulation is get out there and explore and, and start to come up with creative ways to do business. Oh, yeah. You know, I know a cigar shop owner who's in total utter panic. There's no sports on. Like, right. like literally, <laughs> literally. Well, there's no sports on for the next three weeks. Well, my business, my yeah. business, and I'm like, um, are you a sports bar? Like, in my mind, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I, uh, like, I don't, I don't. Well, no, people don't like to smoke cigars and watch sports. I'm smoking a cigar whether there's a freaking game on or not. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yes. He could al- he, he could always pivot to karaoke cigar. <laughs> Please don't give any don't don't give anybody ideas, Drew. Don't give don't, uh, don't give anybody ideas, you know. Oh um, yeah, just messing. Around. Yeah, know. but no, yeah, I exactly. <laughs> I, you know, one of my things I tell people that I like to do is, uh, you know, I, I I'm I'm becoming a spirits connoisseur, uh, you know, as of the last year now, and really I got great great support. I got great educational people behind me uh that offer me a lot of uh information uh, so yeah if you don't mind i'm gonna jump off is that okay can i jump off into my first one yeah you can jump off i'm just having a little scatterbrained have you ever had the la aurora uh 20 uh one the 115th year yes i've had that yes okay. sir then i won't send you some i actually drew uh, your box is being constructed what? Yes, I have it on my desk, and I am making a list, and I am uh, shipping cigars. So it, it's really happening. All right. Scouts Can we put that on. in a nice uh, Quote? stainless Can... lockdown package? Oh. COVID-19 free. <laughs> Uh yeah, I can I can I can arrange for that. Scouts Anna. So yeah, I, I got a perfect box to ship in and we we we're, we're we're starting that. Uh Paul did some shopping. So uh you will be getting some goodies finally your way. Hey, at least we sent the equipment your way first. That was the most right. important. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. The equipment was very important because I'll tell you I, me me being on that lo fi system sucked yeah. big time. Yeah. So this is really nice to have. Uh definitely. So please uh, I can't thank you guys enough for that, yeah. uh, for the equipment. But yeah, uh, uh, and I also have your box ready too. Uh, actually, You're just waiting uh, for my box. My, hey, my, at least my, no, my sister will be aged. My sister <laughs> was just telling me right now. She's like, "Hey, you know, we got Joe's box ready a week ago, and you still haven't not sent it." So she's just been tasked uh, to take my card and go ship it to y'all. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Like you a nice surprise in her. You have an assistant. Well, yeah. Oh, I, I got to renegotiate my contract here at Stogie Geeks. That's what I need, an assistant. Yeah. All right. Nice. I like it. All right. Hey, whiskey sour or whiskey mash. Yes. You like those? Uh, Add those? Yeah. Oh, are they delicious? Uh, let me think about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, whiskey mash, whiskey, whiskey sours. I mean, you know, um, you know, one of my favorite drinks uh, as of late, I've been going to all these different, uh, you know, uh, bars, uh, eateries, and, and I'll, I'll make up uh, friends with the uh, bartender, and I'll start asking them what they like to make, and they'll start giving me a list, and I'm like, well, how about we start with a whiskey mash or sour, and next thing I know, I'm, I'm enjoying something that's 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 different. Uh to where they're from, and they'll and every bartender has a region that they're from, and they start breaking down, you know, their 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 makeup of the drink, um, and so yeah, this 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 drink right here is, you know, it's got a it's got a sweet and tart taste to it. Uh, it's the bourbon uh, has a uh, you know creates a flavor uh, of, and it just becomes a, a refreshment drink with the citrus and things of that nature. So mm-hmm. with this cigar. I, with this with this drink, I've been I've been enjoying uh, uh, creme brulees with this with this drink. Creme brulee uh, lately by uh, yeah. uh, uh, Steve Saka. Steve. Yeah. Oh yeah. They, yep. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So Steve, yeah, the creme brulees with this drink. Yep. And uh, you know, you get the sweet, you get the crispness of the drink. Uh, it's 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 you know, you get the floral notes. I mean, everything just comes together. It's a great spring drink, and it's just, you know, it marries well. And uh, 
yeah, I, I just, you know, the, this is definitely uh, something I would definitely recommend uh, cigar enthusiasts and spirit th- enthusiasts to, to, to get, get the mashup going, man. I mean, try these things out. I mean, these are, these are just, you'll find an enjoyment there, uh, you know, especially during these days right now where you can't go outside and enjoy things with 500 plus people. So why not stay home or go to your favorite bar where they only allow 10 patrons in at a time? And enjoy the space and enjoy the beverage with the, with the stogie. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other sticks that you would compare that to? Because I have an interesting thought from that as as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the other ones are going to be like, uh, you know, some of the Cuba Cuba acids, you know, uh, uh, some of the acid sticks. Again, you know, you get a lot of flora, you get a lot of sweetness there to balance it out. Um, I tried a fat ba- bottom Betty with it. Uh, mm. This thing was, and then, it, you know, with the brown sugars and the, and the uh, baking spices. I mean, just it. That that was another one there I liked. Uh, the other stick uh, was the Rocky Patel decade. Oh yeah, yeah it was a decade. Yep. Uh, you know, again, you know, you get uh, a lot of aromatics from Rocky Patel's decade stick, and uh, yeah. So those are my. Those are my sticks with that drink, and uh, and there's more. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, the, the the you're you're looking at it. Uh, um, uh, you 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 mentioned the drink, and you mentioned an exact uh, pairing for that. Uh, I'm going to just go. Uh, you looked at it as for like boots on the ground. I'm going to a uh, a, a I want to go to a place where I can enjoy a cigar and a cocktail. I'm going to order mm-hmm. product A, product B, and match them. I'm going to look mm-hmm. at it from a step differently of concept A, concept B, but but bringing it in and matching it. What I mean by that is if you were going to have your drink, which was a whiskey sour, right, mm-hmm. or a mashed whiskey sour, right? Mm-hmm. Mashed whiskey sour, I'm just assuming it's mashed first like it was being prepared and muddled and all of that stuff there too. Uh, um, muddled. Yeah, yes. muddled. Yeah, let me tell you something. Paul is super into that stuff. He does it on his uh, Big Thursday show all the time. Uh, if you watch our early episodes of Story Geeks, when it was on, they were really, really big into that. That Just so for the Story Geeks listeners at home, uh, it, it, and, and you end, actually venture out to a brick and mortar that serves drinks, uh, ask mm-hmm. if they have any drinks that specials that they mash, because at the end of this episode, we're going to be able to com- to to pair up cigars and concepts with that. So there is a difference than if you go to a place and say, "I'll have a whiskey sour," or if you'll have anything and then and then you have it mashed, because having it mashed really brings out um, the the uh, juices. Uh, and the contents that uh, and, and bitters of what's going to be mashed. So there's a point being taken there. Okay, now you also mentioned Rocky Patel Decade, uh, mm-hmm. Deadwood, um, Fat Bottom Betty, uh, Cuba Cuba, and a uh, the original one, the uh, uh, cream, uh, cream Belay by Steve Saka. Oh, yeah. Here's the point sure. of matching product A with concept B. All, mm-hmm. With the exception of the Cuba Cuba, in my opinion, uh, all mm-hmm. of those cigars are uh, have uh, in in strength have a uh, barely medium profile, right? Yes. So again, if if you go to a local shop uh, and you want a cigar and a cocktail, and those brands are not available, you want to go with a lighter cigar. Maybe Connecticut Shade would be a safe bet for you, yes. so that your cigar is subtle and the um subtle on your palate in regards to strength um um not not taste strength and then uh in regards to taste that's discretionary right some people might like the kuba kuba over the the, the cream belay i personally like the deadwood uh fat bottom betty over the kuba kuba although we all know about my kuba kuba and time and cadence of when i do smoke them uh there Mm uh however you know, uh, and then obviously decade amazing stick. I've talked about it a gazillion times here on the show, um, and and so if you go with a um, a barely medium uh, profile or light profile in regards to strength, Connecticut yes. Shade wrapper, um, it, Nicaraguan you could go Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan. tobacco, but yes. I would go Honduran 
uh, bind of whatever combination you want, just just to not go like Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan, N- Nicaraguan is my point. You know, which yes. will which will then make it be a medium plus or a medium to a full. You know, uh, whiskey sour pair with um, a lighter bodied profiled cigar. Oh yeah, then I, I know that's a good point because I, I I when I when I go out and I uh, I I try to keep a little journal of what I'm doing as far as the mixer. You know, I always try to go in uh, when choosing my whiskeys. You know, because some whiskeys have a higher alcohol strength or proof, so that also plays into that um, that decision of what I'm going to pair it up with. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm not if I'm not going to get that really sweet tarty taste that a mash is known for and i'm gonna go more in strength on the alcohol then i start to i start to uh uh how do you say uh uh change it up a little bit and one of the ways i do change it up is with these nice bad boys so i uh a lot of my friends know me as the smoky guy because i like to get smoke chips and um i like to you know smoke him smoke the glass and then mix the drink or when i go out somewhere i'll ask them do you do you do any smoking can you smoke the glass and then and then again that that just brings out more aromatics and more flavors but Mm -hmm. so forth there's a lot to go around with this actually to back you up if you go to storygeeks.com and type in like smoking drinks not uh paul did a whole segment i know he did one with previous hosts, you also did one with me as well, so you can get a better yeah. idea. But you actually uh, smoked the, the the glass there, and it does that. We were supposed to do yeah. a segment on that and do a smoker uh, yeah. there. Uh, also, if you're making drinks at home, you know you have a bunch of friends that you know you do box split with a friend on a Story Geeks recommendation or something like that, or oh, yeah. or another recommendation. Don't be afraid to experiment with bitters. Uh, to my right. right uh, if I were to face the, the the set this way, which is the PSW, the Paul Security Weekly set, there's a there's a bar behind us here. It's a bar right here, and we probably have I don't know, thirty, nah, probably twenty, twenty five different types of bitters. bitters that Paul's yeah. got, and and all people have come from the security or story geeks before, and and brought some cocktails and do that and and you can you can make some pretty good recipes uh there as well and if you got a good one that mm-hmm. you want to recommend uh email joe at storygeeks.com or drew at storygeeks.com or both of us and uh let us know for sure cuz i always like to experiment with with some yeah. uh there uh speaking on kind of classic i i like um i i like scotch I'm right. a little bit more into uh, whiskey or rum. It's more uh, I I I love rum in cigars. I love red wine in cigars. Uh, we'll save the wine for another segment at another time. Um, but you know, uh, with whiskey, I like to go with a uh, classic Padron. You know, mm-hmm. because the whiskey can be like, and I'm talking just whiskey neat, right? So uh, either neat, you you can do on the rocks uh, there, uh, or just whiskey with like a almost like two drops or three drops of water with an eye drop. I don't use an eye dropper. I just give a little, you know what I mean, and uh, mm-hmm. away you go. But whiskey, um, you know, uh, with with uh, with a Padron is 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 a is a solid solid um choice or That's whiskey classic. yeah or you know classic, classic. Uh, also if you take it a step above if you're comparing like the two levels for the purpose of of this segment here uh whiskey with like uh something aged that's that's like a a staple of uh, whatever brand it is, so it could be twenty year anniversary, something or other fifty year whatever whatever uh they come up with yeah. with classic uh uh classic limited runs all the time. Um, I think whiskey is a super cool choice uh, for that. Um, Go yeah. ahead. What else you got? So yeah, and if you don't mind, I want I want to I want to kind of give a shout out to one of my friends here. And I want to share this with the Stoke Geeks listener and yourself, oh. Joe. Um, on 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 YouTube, a friend of mine, his name is uh, uh, Chris Trevino. Uh, I met him a f- uh, late last uh, early last year, and. Uh, and uh, he has a show or uh, a YouTube channel called Liquor Hound. 
And I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, just type in Liquor Hound, check them out. I mean, you talk about uh, uh, experiencing or, uh, uh, you know, just going through the experience with spirits. I mean, this is one I would definitely want to share with everybody just because, I mean, you, you just start to self-educate yourself and, and you move forward uh, with your cigar pairings and things of that nature or any kind of pairings. I mean, dinner, what have you. But anyhow, Liquor Hound, check them out. Chris Trevino, tell them Drew sent you from Stogie Geeks. There you uh, go. So wait a minute before uh, you continue. Since, yeah, go ahead. since you're, you're 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 driving this bus, it's shout out time, right? So we might as yeah. well take care of that. I gotta read it underneath the light. I can't I can't see what they're set up. <laughs> uh, I I did get an email. By the way, it's dated over this week, so there's no tricks uh-huh. this time, right? McAuliffe Cigars um, announced a new Maduro, and it's called "quote unquote" to be named. McAuliffe Cigars <laughs> releases a brick and mortar exclusive. This is a six by seventy-five by um, I'm sorry six 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 point seventy-five by fifty-four Grand Toro. It has a Maduro wrapper, Sumatra binder, and a mix of Dominican and Nicaraguan filler. Um, this uh, is the first cigar of 2020 for McAuliffe Cigars, and it celebrates the one-year anniversary of the McAuliffe Ambassador Program. They are uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, M- M- McAuliffe Cigars are continuing uh, the Ambassador Program. Uh, if you're new to that program, all you have to do is go to StoryGeeks.com, click on that McAuliffe logo, they, and type in your information. They are looking for a cigar ambassador in your area, something that would be fascinating if you want to uh, step uh, into the uh, industry and meet some uh, people. Uh, there for sure. There are some benefits that will go um, with the ambassador program. But in regards to this M- 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 McAuliffe Maduro to be named, uh, it retails for around seven fifty. It'll be shipping to brick and mortar stores immediately. So that was over this uh, month here. Um, and talk about going on and continuing with your business regardless of what's going on. Anyway, mm. if you want to join the ambassador program, StoryGeeks.com, click click on that ambassador program. You get an ambassador coin, an exclusive Facebook group mess, uh, membership, a uh, c- c- couple of swag items there. Um, they have contests for ambassadors that I am not aware of yet because I am not an ambassador. So uh, if you are a McAuliffe ambassador and you signed up through the Story Geeks program, email uh, Drew, Drew and I. We'd like to uh, get a chance to catch up with you. Uh, I am told that we are going to int- uh, have an interview coming pretty soon with McAuliffe Scars. So Story Geeks, you want to stay tuned for that. You, you get a 25% discount on all swag items and you get a behind-the-scenes view of a boutique cigar company. So, something to yes. uh, pay attention to. Let's continue on with the show. Nice, 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 nice. So, anyways, I, what I was saying was that uh, on, on your take on whiskeys, uh, I, I particularly am uh, liking the uh, Glen Mirage uh, uh, 18-year-old scotch. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a scotch whiskey, uh, and it's uh, extremely rare. That's what they're titling it as. It's about 125 bucks on the market, but that man, you're talking about a good cigar. With that, is going to be uh, my uh, cigar of the year choice. That did not become cigar of the year uh, is the San Lantano cigar uh, with AJ Fernandez. Mm. So great, great pairing on that. Um, that's just again. I mean, uh, I've, I've done this. Uh, Scotch whiskey with uh, different sticks, like some of the Opus X, uh, the Don, Don Lino Africa sticks. Uh, but yeah, this one here with the with the uh, with the uh, San Lontano, uh, which is a again a light uh, medium wrapper. It's a medium body cigar, uh, uh, and it's uh, it pairs well with it. So, just wanted to put that out there. <clears throat> what what was the drink again? Uh, Glen Mirage, eighteen year old. Uh, Scotch whiskey, uh, extremely rare. Rare is what it's. It's what it's titled. Um, so it's just a straight. You know, you just you just uh, take it neat. I like I like my I like my beverages neat. Yeah. By the way, so I don't do a lot of ice and all that other stuff. But, you don't uh, do the water, the little drop of thing. I don't know. It opens it up a little bit. Yeah, I do that. I, I've been doing that lately with some of the stuff that I've been getting. Uh, 
uh, I've been watching Chris's uh, videos and just kind of just learning that process yep. because sometimes you can put water in something and it just ruins it. So, so I'm learning that process right as we speak, um, you know, and then like, like in the last couple of months and try not to ruin good whiskeys. <laughs> I hear you. So, I hear you. Did you yeah. like this uh, La Rara, the uh, one I'm smoking, the 115? Yes. Yes. It's uh, been, do I have... It's been a while, but yeah, I think it's going to be like the last time I smoked it was back in November of last year, because mm-hmm. um, I had just had the Laura Roa 107. Yep. Uh, yep. yep. I just had that one. So, um, but it's been a while. I have to go back and kind of figure that it's out again. I, I'm loving the the retro. I'm halfway through, and 100 percent, just just dig, sitting here, comfy, cozy in the chair, and and. Just, just yeah. like, damn, that cigar's freaking, freaking good, <laughs> you know. That's all. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if 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 it's distracting me, like, like it's, uh, which is yeah. why I forgot, like, what you said about the drink when when I asked, I was like, this freaking, I'm sorry, what are you saying, Drew? <laughs> 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 uh, are we doing a show? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You so know. my next drink I, on my list Whoa, was... Yeah, well, was what about me? What about me? You don't care, though. No, hold, on, hold on. Enjoy that cigar uh, for a little bit longer. Okay, cool. <clears throat> it, it's my turn. <clears throat> uh, uh, Johnny, hit the mute button on him, please. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bit Julep. So that's my next drink. Uh, again, you know, staying with things that are fresh, that are citrus, that are minty and simple syrup. Crushed ice. I mean, just one of my favorite drinks, you know, uh, especially during the Kentucky Derby season, uh, you know, or when I go to the racetrack just down the street from my house over here. Uh, Maybe. Maybe. But uh, with this. <laughs> you mu- there might be a Derby. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, mint julep, uh, again, I mean, just a lot of, you know, just, it, it, you know, it combines bourbon, uh, simple syrup, uh, mint. Uh, crushed ice. It's a simple ingredient, simple drink, but uh, pairing it again. Um, you know, I've done that with the. Uh, uh, I think the number three stick of the year, which was the. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of that. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. On that one, I was a, with the J.C. Newman Black Diamond. Oh, I actually, that's what I had. With the I love that stick. Oh my goodness, man! So I, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I went with that stick. Uh, with the mint julep. Yeah. Okay. And, and surprise, you know, for me and my palate, man, it was just it, it, it rounded everything off very well. Uh, spicy, you know, you get the spicy, you get the sweet, uh, you get the mint. Then you come back in with some some uh, uh, oak. You know, it, it just the, all these things just what's working on my palate. You know, uh, every time I've had that drink with the Black Diamond, um, I somehow, some way, I've just decided to just go ahead and buy some boxes of Black Diamond, and <clears throat> just because I like to have that drink, you know, quite a bit. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, that that was my stick for that for that drink. Uh, that, that, what about that, you? That well, that's interesting because. Regardless of what I was going to say, I thought you were still going to come up with something that's a little bit of lighter in the profile. Mm-hmm. Um, when I, but, and then I was going to round out saying that, okay, this segment, we really did spirits, but we, we picked it with a lighter profile. But again, uh, I guess that's not the case. So that's great, right? Open dialogue. Right. For sure. Yeah. Um, how are you enjoying <laughs> anything can happen Friday? Right. Um, uh, I've always pro- I've always had like the profile of a black diamond uh, with drinks that I guess you could say that are kind of salty, right? Yeah. Bloody Mary, mm-hmm. a Bloody Mary for sure, right? I pair a yeah. ton of stuff. Yeah. I pair a ton of stuff with, with with Bloody Mary, or I I would go martini, um, martini, a dirty yes. martini again, salty. You got some of the the the, the olive component there. I am going to make it a quest for myself to have a mint julep with that type of profile cigar. Because if because if oh, we yeah. if I I, I were I would totally waiting for your response in the cigar. I thought it would be lighter again, so that you're enjoying the sweetness. Uh, talk to us about the um, the the 
the palate, uh, how that's on your palate. Because, like I said, I've often gone stronger cigars for pairing, a mm-hmm. salty type of mix, or a, a red wine, which that's another discussion, right? Depends on mood, sure. right? So I've yeah. never, I shouldn't say I never, I'm sure I have, but I've, I, as far as like my go to, I probably would go for something more salty. Not not that I don't like the sweeter drinks, like like mm. you would have simple syrup in there uh, and whatnot. But if I've done that, I've always traditionally went with a lighter smoke because of bringing out the drink. So tell me, tell just just spend if you could kind of elaborate about how that is because the the, yeah. the uh, black diamond isn't a uh, light no. cigar. Uh, not by any at, means at, of the at all. I mean, it's a phenomenal cigar. of the imagination. I like it. It's in my wheelhouse. I mean, I totally yeah. like it. Um, so, what, what, what's that like with with the with the sweetness of the or the crisp? You, you have sweetness, but it's not sweet like 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 Maduri sour or fruity right. sweet. It's crispy yeah. sweet on your palate, and there is a difference. Right. So, how how does that contrast with 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 the stronger cigar? I'll tell you, you're absolutely right. So I always, you know, I've always done it with uh, martinis. Uh, I've always did it with some Merlot and some of my, uh, I'm talking about the Black Diamond. Uh, I've always I've also paired it up with the uh, some cabs. And so, you know, because the heavy body, the, 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 the flavor, you know, the tannins, you know, the way they coat the palate and then come back through with my stogie. But on this side of the fence with the, uh, you know, with the with the crispness of that. I mean, first of all, my bourbon was like, I want to say 100.8 percent. Uh, you know, 108 proof. <laughs> so mm. that was a little. That was a little on the heavy side. Uh, the bourbon uh, of choice was, you know, uh, was 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 smoky in itself. Uh, but then when you break it in with the syrup, simple syrup and mint. Uh, and the crushed ice, uh, it, it brought a balance to it. So when I went in with my JC with the with the black diamond stick, uh, the I liked that when I took my draws of my stick during the rotation of my drinking uh, of the drink, uh, it just created uh, an extra sensory inside. You know, on my on my umami. On the sides, the sweet, the salty sides of your tongue, or whatever that, whatever they, the taste buds that are there. Uh, so it just really enlightened it, 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 it cleaned it up. So um, to be able to take that smoke contact in, and you're right, it does get heavy. Uh, and once that, um, you know, but once that process goes through, I mean, it, you know, on the retro hell, uh, or just releasing that 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 dr- uh, draw. Uh, yeah, it, it, it paired nicely. I mean, it came through really great. So, mm. uh, smoke content wise, yes, it's it's heavy, but yet it, yet it 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 seemed to do fine. I'm trying uh, to, I'm, I'm trying to the, create a visual. Like when I do salty with with strong, it's yeah. almost like it's like uh, what are those called in math? Exponents. Like you taste Exponents. it, you taste it, and it's strong. So you take a sip. Yeah. You take a sip of the Bloody Mary or the something salty, whatever, salt water, uh-huh. right, whatever, right, whatever, whatever it is that you're having. And then when you have strong, yeah. it makes it go from like here to here, right? Like, like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're like, okay, that's good. Oh, wow. That, and it opens it up and makes it a yes. little bit more intensive if you're going salty. The way you're yeah. describing it is, to me, it's almost like a – like so you have your strong – but then it's like maybe like oil, oil and water, or, or whatever, or oil and vinegar. You know how they separate? It separates yeah, the separate. palate. It's separate. Wow, yeah. that's interesting. I, I'm that will be my quest this week if we get 50 degree weather uh, here. Because right. some if we have 20, I don't think I'm going to be going for a mint julep. I'm just not feeling it. But uh, we've been having a couple of 50 degree days here, and I think I'm going to do that. Where I'm going to. Uh, Are you there? Oh, you broke up. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to have a, a black diamond. And I'm gonna have a mint julep, and I, I will report back. Oh yeah, and the other one to that too. Uh, a couple of buddies of mine have they, they've been they they'll get a Brazilian uh, uh, Maduro wrapper uh, cigar with that. Uh, you know, the smooth, the spicy, and then uh, and then it just it, it to them it's been a fantastic uh, compliment to the mint julep as well. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, yeah. Awesome. Do you have any other remember, pairings? Because I only have one. Remember, I'm a heavy. I'm a. I love my heavy body cigars. So it's hard for me to 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 keep. You know, I I, I mean, if you look at my humidor here. My beautiful J.C. Newman humidor, by the way. <laughs> it's it's. I mean, I, I got you know like some of my Connecticut uh, rappers. I mean, there you'll see a lot of dark cigars, a lot of heavy body uh, cigars in there, for sure. Mm. But you got your light ones too. I've been on a, I've been yeah. on a taste kick for light stuff, and a lot of that happens to deal like usually when when Paul does a lot of shopping um, for, yeah. for for for. Uh, to f- stock the humidor, uh, you know he he gets a lot. He, 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 most of the stuff he gets is is a little lighter from my profile, but you know I try it. And it's like I always like man, I f- I forget like how much I I enjoy this stuff as well. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you know it, g- it gives your palate a little bit of rest uh, for sure. We've been um, we've been into um, the um, the Romeo and Julietta heritage mm, uh, okay there. do you ever that's have that's been one? a while you ever have one of that's those? been a that's been a long time it's been a while it's going in the box so that's good all right yeah, we've been going and, and and i'm like wow and 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 again it's like i i know it's because i think oh it's good and then the next day i come in and 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 paul's in the office like dude did you have this vintage i'm like that's great you know and then we and then we get into our dialogue and 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 stuff like that and i'm like wow yeah you know because you just you just you you just ride the wave and then you forget sometimes um, how much you you enjoy uh, some some of the the classic or some of the lighter bodied profiles when when you're doing that and you bring a good point too uh, in the summer like I'm talking like like crazy hot days in summer right I'm talking about oh, yeah. I'm talking about heat and I live in the northeast of someone from Texas like I bet mm-hmm. you if I lived in Texas I, uh, uh, there's more heat days than than we have here in the northeast right. Uh, I would oh, yeah. probably subside from some of the real strong, heavy stuff because your body sometimes, like you know, it's like one of those things where you get out of the shower and you're still sweating and the AC is still on. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those days. <laughs> you're like, you're like you really don't want to go Nicaragua, 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 and wrap a binder filla. You know? Oh, yeah. Sometimes. You no, know? we have we we have this wonderful concoction called te- called Texas teas. Oh my God! So that's my that's right. That's my next project right now is working on these Texas teas. I've had uh, those, um, not uh, uh, not in Texas, but um, yeah. that, that's like a Long Island iced tea ish. It's like a five liquor combo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think Texas so, makes it six because it's Texas. Is that am I right on that? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. It's comp. It's very complex, and so trying to uh, I, I'm trying to figure out some complex sticks to 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 marry with those but that'll be for another segment another time but yeah during the during the weather months or summer months here I mean it, it can be a hundred degrees yeah for 90 for 90 days straight I mean a hundred plus degrees 90 days plus, uh, straight and so there's yeah it but yeah but yeah I, I've I've been always in you know being able to enjoy uh, sticks you know all sticks throughout the summer months but yeah i think you're yeah and I, you're right i mean i that's when i go down to like some of the asylum sticks uh yep. some of the some of the estelle uh estelle sticks uh uh i go down to some of you know some of the sticks that are are, are connecticut broadleaf wrapper mm-hmm. nicaraguan binder nicaraguan binder uh you know that are from like the uh, volcanic soils in Estelle, Nicaragua, that have tasty flavors. They're espresso, their earthiness, oak, spice. You know, they'll, I'll break up with some of those, and you know, I just, I just, I, I love experimenting. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, another yeah. pairing I like is uh, rum, and we can get oh, yeah. rowdy on rum. Uh, there, <laughs> I, uh, there. I, I, I like rum. Uh, I love rum in the summer. Uh, I like rum neat in the summer. Uh, yeah. you know, um, I, I, I love lazy rum days for sure. Um, and, uh, pairing a, my father, something or other, anything usually in that, my father line with, uh-huh. with, with, with the rum is, uh, is a, is a good go-to for, uh, for me. It gives me, you know, I get the sweetness of the rum, um, the laziness of, of, of the eyes from the rum underneath the eyes, you know, and, yeah. and, and you just kind of like, it just really puts, puts me in like a real tranquil mood. And then when you, when you do like a, my father, you got a little bit of kick in there from, from, from the blend, but they're, yeah. they're 
a little, a little medium plus some of them, but they're in that medium pro, uh, profile. And uh, you know, again, classic facing with with the with 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 Don Pepin uh, there. Or um, that's probably the only times I've always said on the show I I like Don Pepin Black better than Don Pepin Blue, even though the blue got a higher rating back uh-huh. back in its day. But if I'm doing a rum, I, I'd probably toggle it back and go to the blue. The, the black seems a little bit more sh- stronger in my profile, uh, uh-huh. on my palette. But I would jump back into a, to a blue and and kick back, and that's uh, that, that's a good combo for for me as well. You know. Mm. Oh yeah. So uh, uh, you want to change subject just, right uh, quick as we had a couple of minutes remaining, or we want to stay on this and then wrap it up? What are you thinking? No, no, no. I was going to say, uh, you know, come, uh, yeah, well, yeah, let's let's go ahead and break from 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 this kind uh, from this topic and go. Well, I, what I wanted to say to a lot of us Token Geeks listeners is uh, so I, I was doing a cigar uh, morning stogie. I was, I was yeah. doing that. Yeah. And You've so what I'm doing right now. Weeks. What's that? You've subsided for three weeks. I've subsided longer than that. So what oh, it really? is is that I'm developing yep. a new uh uh, format to bring this, and I actually have already gotten uh, some in the can. And what I want to do is I want, I want to bring this like into a video uh, deal. And what I'm doing is I, uh, with the Stogie uh, Stogies of the morning is, you know, just give a, a quick talk about the Stogie, uh, and just kind of talk about why this Stogie is, you know, is perfect for the morning, and and just kind of give information, you know, where it's grown. I want to give it original content. I don't want to go out and just do the cut and paste or just kind of grab the information. Not that I was doing that a hundred percent, but you know, sometimes I would be stressed, you know, not stressed for time, but just stretch for time. So I'm bringing an original content together. Uh, this will also go in line with another project I'm, uh, that you and I will be working with that you don't even know about yet. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, let some of the viewers know, cause I'm getting them a lot of emails. Hey, what's going on with Stogie morning Stogies. And you know, I enjoy it. It, you know, kicks out my day. I love. So I just want to let our let our followers know that um, that's coming back here uh, in uh, mid April, mm-hmm. uh, but it's going to be under a new format and just going to be awesome. And I think that uh, uh, also the cigar manufacturers are going to really love it, and it's going to create uh, some 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 exciting that's cool. uh, con- content. So. Yeah, once you get a, a batch of those four or five, oh, whatever, yeah. I'll I'll. I'll uh, Talk to Paul and see if we could put them on the site as well. So, so at least they're backed yeah. up for you. Yeah. Well, as well. I, everything I'm everything I do here is going to be all you know. It's in conjunction with Stoic Geek, so well, uh, it's know, not something just for me. I, I want my team. You know, this, you guys have been fabulous with me. So, uh, but yeah, it's something I want to definitely go down this road with you guys. Well, mm-hmm. one of the things you could do, uh, if you go to StoicGeeks.com, Stoic Geeks listeners, Andrew, and you click on Stogies. They used to have reviews, and we do reviews, and I post them uh, spo- yeah. sp- sporadically as well. We could do the yeah. video format and just line them up for stogies. For stogies, because what it does yeah. is it has tags in there for the rating. So yeah, uh, we can do Drew. They have a tag. Joe Hosempa, Paul, other yeah. hosts, previous hosts, and all of that. And so the Stogie Geeks listener can now pull all of, or could always do it. What are all the ones that Joe listed as a fiver, or what are the only ones that Joe listed as an oasis, or whatever, and then tag them if you're giving them a rating, and we can throw those up yeah. on the Story Geek site pretty quickly. Uh, yeah. Just to, so you know, your first week when we onboarded you for Story Geeks, we did give you that option. You just uh, we're we're a little non-computer. <laughs> to do it yeah <laughs> you know what i mean but you know which yeah. which if you still want me to camouflage uh, and do that for you i can send yeah. that there um and post that video format up there for you or do a section and whatnot yeah so we can so we i can got my own. certainly get that yeah, done yeah. for you yeah, no, that's awesome because I, uh, in the last uh, couple of months, I've put together a small production staff <laughs> with my assistant. There you go. You and, a production uh, staff. Uh, yeah, and so an we assistant. want. Yeah, these 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 uh, these these uh, kids, uh, you know, they they have this, uh, you know, they they're doing these workshops in their college uh, for credits in high school and things of that nature, and we have some some of the top. Uh, media people uh, here, studios and things of that nature. So, uh, 
was able to uh, make friends with a few people, and they they they're really liking this uh, uh, format um, that we're doing. And also, so it, it it's going to be awesome. It's, you know, it's going to be great. And so, I look forward to rolling it out to you here, probably in the next couple of weeks. Let you see you and Paul see uh, some of the first uh, deals, and then to yeah. get your take on it. But I think you guys are going to absolutely love it, just along so with you all know, of our followers. No, awesome. No, and just so you know, from a standpoint, like if we post it on the site, it'll go to your Facebook automatically. Yeah. As well. Yeah, we're trying. So we yeah. have that uh, set in place if you wanted to utilize that. So, yeah, well, when, yeah. You, when you get a batch of them, three, four, five, send them our way, yep. and uh, we'll, we'll stick them uh, as to where they go. Uh, are you giving them a Story Geek rating? As well, or because I know you were on some and and stuff like yes. that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's it, it was kind of on the back side of it, so I wanted to, on that side. I wanted to get with you guys and and figure that out. But yeah, I definitely want to do that because uh, I, I, that was one of the things that I always got a lot of response from is when we actually rated them. So yeah, we definitely would take that uh, down the road with this new uh, format that we're going to be doing these on. Yeah, there, there, there's no doubt. I mean, I, I've gotten emails saying, you know, your, your sticks of the week, I've purchased this and this. I agree, disagree, and, and stuff like yeah. that. And I know there's a comment section on the site that you can monitor yeah. and all of that stuff there, too. So, yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, yeah. that's uh, we, can, we can bring that back to life for sure. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Other than that, I mean, yeah. Other than that, you know, uh, you know, we're also going through a big boot, uh, big growth uh, process over at Prestige Cigars and Tobacco over at my home lounge in Bedford, Texas. We're expanding. We're doing a bunch of neat stuff. I'm actually the general manager of uh, outside sales uh, and outside events, uh, you know, for the location. Mm -hmm. So we're we're doing a whole new. I mean, we're doing. A, I mean, we're we're growing. Uh, we're gonna get we're getting a new humidor built. Uh, just a bunch of neat things for this for this uh, for this first cigar lounge that I'm very proud to be part of. That's awesome. And uh, if you're ever in a DFW, uh, if you find yourself here in the DFW area, please uh, look up Prestige Cigars and Tobacco, and you'll find yourself in a lovely oasis That's uh, awesome. of a cigar lounge. Oh, sounds like you're uh, taking some good advice about just doing your business, and then when you have to pivot. Uh, when the world tells yes. you to pivot or the government tells you to pivot, then you make a decision accordingly. I like it. That's right, brother. That's some genius there. <laughs> That's some genius advice there. That's awesome. Awesome, Drew. Yeah. It's great to catch up with you for sure. Stoey Geeks, I want to remind you that we can keep the conversation going all week long. Go to StoeyGeeks.com. Check us out on Facebook.com forward slash Stoey Geeks. We are on that Twitter thingy. You can follow Drew and I on uh, Twitter. Email Drew8. Drew H. <laughs> Drew at StogieGeeks.com or Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. I want to remind you that behind every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and support your brick and mortar business. Special thanks go out to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, Placentia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars. Drew, thanks for joining me. Story Geeks, we'll see you next time. Peace.